planning to make an installation and we want to be sure that we're not going to run into any plumbing, any pipes, any water lines, gas lines, etc. So we're going to take a little time and try to figure out our grid, find out where the pipes are before we begin to dig. So we're using a metal detector today and some flags. And we know we have pipes here, but we're not sure where they are. So we're going to, we're going to walk through and with our flags, we're going to try to locate and spot those pipes and make sure that our trees are going to be well away from those pipes. The first thing in general we want to discover on site is where our pipes run and where our indicators are. We've got a spigot right here so we know the pipes are coming out this far. We're going to begin here and start flagging our way back over to our planting site and make sure that we're not going to plant over a line. So here we are, we've got an indicator right here. Sure enough, we got our pipe right here. We're going to hop to the other side of our little pathway. There it is right there. We're just going to track it. And we're going to follow our way up the line. We're using the flags to give ourselves a visual reference of where the lines are. We think the line runs this way up the hill. So we're going to try to determine here we go, right here. Okay, we're going to continue to follow this line. About six feet away, we're going to go ahead and flag again. Now we know there's another line that runs at about 90 degrees to this, so we're going to try to track that line and flag it as well. Well, we know it's here. Okay. We're still following. Good. Most of the plumbing and the grid of irrigation systems are laid out on a grid work of 90 degree grids. And so this gives us an indication of, of where those lines run and helps us determine where our favorable installation sites might be. Certainly we don't want to plant a tree over the line. Trees can lift and heave pipes, especially our root aggressive species. So we want to plant the right tree on the right spot and avoid the common mistakes. So we see we've got a gas line running right through here. So a little bit of a concern and we're going to alert the homeowner to this. Our other line runs crossways and we know it to be a water main and is not associated with this other line. They just happen to cross each other right here. One's a gas line, one's a water line. We don't want to disrupt either of them. So we're going to choose our site very carefully. With the help of the metal detector, we can go along and double check. If there's a chance of something really big being underground or really important and the hole is to be dug, especially with a mechanical equipment, you may want to call Dig Alert and be sure, be absolutely assured that you're not going to break into a utility line. It can be extremely dangerous, even deadly. So we take it very seriously when we're going to make a dig. A lot of times our dig begins with an exploratory dig. We dig by hand with a shovel or a hoe. We uncover our key lines, get the grid, know where they go and where they don't go, and we can adjust our landscape design to accommodate site conditions. Unfortunately, a lot of irrigation lines, especially landscape irrigation lines, are run in PVC plastic. And our metal detector, of course, will not indicate them. We cannot find them with a metal detector. So there's a little bit of an extra precaution when it comes to the PVC lines and a little more caution and care in studying the grid, the layout, the orientation and position of sprinkler heads. And it may be that you just have to go through with your flags and mark all of the sprinkler heads that are present, all the rainbirds, all the sprinkler heads. And those at least will begin to show a grid pattern of structure to the irrigation system. And many times that's enough to tell you where those lines run. So after revealing the position of our grid, we're gonna come a good five, six feet back from our lines to be sure that we have plenty of root space for the tree and that also we're not gonna damage any lines in the digging process. We wanna leave plenty of room 
for our iron pipes and our utility grid. So we've allowed about five, six feet. We can plant about right here and we'll be fine, well back from our, our main grid. If you're planting small ornamentals, flowers, or small container plants, there's not such a big concern about if there's going to be root heaving and buckling and displacement of pipes. It's the trees where we're most concerned. If we're going to put in a tree that has large mature size, that root crown is going to be powerful enough to disrupt pipes. So we want to plan away from that. Many trees are removed because they interfere with the utility grid. They interfere with foundations, footings, and so forth. So we want to know where those lines are so we can avoid an interference problem in the future.